if only there was a way to see if my ATX power supply was bad. But there is. Check it out. So here are a couple of common power supply testers. You can find these on many different websites for about 20 or to $25. And they're all generic, regardless of what brand it says. You can find the exact same power supply testers with just different decals on them by the different sellers. So obviously whatever factory is making them is making them for many different companies. Let's look at the major parts of this power supply tester as we get ready to test a PC power supply. Let's look at the various connectors that go onto this power supply tester. So right here we have our 24 pin P1 is gonna plug in. And then over here, you're either gonna have your four pin or eight pin auxiliary power connector. And this is typically the only power connectors you need to connect from your power supply to see if all the voltages are good. Now on this particular power supply, you also have connectors for uh, PCIe video card connectors. You have uh, Molex and SATA connectors, but typically we're not using those unless you're trying to test a particular connector off the power supply. We're just trying to see if the voltages are good on this power supply. Now on this particular one, once you get everything hooked up, you have to push and hold this power button down to have it test the power supply. On the other model power supply tester, we've got the same connectors, the P124 pin, and on this one you'll see it's marked ATX auxiliary eight pin, R4 pin, PCIe, and we have the various other connectors, SATA and Molex, but once again, we're interested in hooking up the 24 pin in the eight pin to get the various voltages. Now this one does not have a power button. As soon as you turn the power supply on, this will energize and test the power supply. So let's move on to testing the power supply. Now let's disconnect the connectors we need to test with the power supply tester. In the typical rat's nest we have inside of a computer case, I need to find the eight pin auxiliary power connector, which is right here. It has a little clip on the side I need to squeeze, and then I can pull this connector out. There's my auxiliary CPU eight pin. And then over here, I have my 24 pin. Now I've got a lot of these other cables in the way. I'm actually gonna disconnect the data cable from the hard drive and the power connector from the hard drive and these other connectors right here and get them out of the way so we can see the 24 pin connector better. And it's got a clip on this side that I can squeeze and then rock back and forth and disconnect the 24 pin. Now the 24 pin is what they typically call a 20 plus four, but modern computers use the full 24 pins even though the four pin is separ separatable. And you might see a low-end computer that only uses the 20 pin, but typically it's gonna be the 24. Now that we have these disconnected, we can plug them into the power supply tester. So just a couple quick details before I go to plug this into the power supply tester. If you look at the ends of these connectors right here, some of them are rounded and some of them are square. So they are keyed so that you do not put them in to the connector backwards. So if you're having trouble plugging this into the power supply tester, you might have it backwards. Look at it carefully. The other thing you're gonna to wanna to make sure you do is get this 24 pin, get all 24 pins close together before you try to plug it in. So now I've got these all close together, lined up properly. I can push them in, they're going in correctly. I push it in all the way. And then we wanna do the same thing with the auxiliary power connector. And as we look at this, you can also see that some of these are rounded and some of these are square, and then they're gonna plug in to the other side of the power supply tester. Struggle, 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 there we go, got it. I've got both of them plugged in. Now to make this a little bit easier for us to see, I'm gonna pause the video and move the power supply tester a little bit further away so we can get a clear view of it. All right, so now I've got my P124 pin connector plugged in. I've got my eight pin auxiliary power plugged in. 
The power supply is plugged into the wall. The 0, 1 switch is on 1. Now I'm going to hit the power button for this power supply tester, and we're going to see if we have a good power supply. We've got to risk a full power start. Drum roll. 3, 2, 1. And as you can see, our voltages look good. There are no errors showing. The voltages are typically not going to be exact. Like the 5 volt there is 4.8. The uh, 12 volt V, the negative 12 volt, is negative 11.6. They're not going to be exact. They're not too far off. The other thing I want you to look at right here is where it says PG. This means power good. This is how long it took the power supply to send the signal to the motherboard that the power has stabilized and you can begin operating. So if that number is too large, that is considered out of specs and it will blink at us. Now let me, I'm going to trigger an error with this power supply deliberately by disconnecting the 12 pin auxiliary right here. So let me turn it off and unplug this. Ugh get that cable out of the way, and this time I'm going to hold the power button down again. And you can hear it's beeping at us, and it's saying that the 12 volt V2 that comes through the auxiliary 8-pin connector is obviously low. I wonder why it's low? Well, you know, helps if you plug it in. So this is one of the two power supply testers. Let's take a look at the other one next. All right, so here's the other power supply tester I have, and just to give us a little bit more variety, I also plugged it in to a different ATX power supply. So you see I've got my P1 24 pin connector plugged in, my 8 pin auxiliary. I'm now going to reach up here and turn on the power supply from 0 to 1, and as it comes up it beeps at us and says everything's good. You can look at the voltages, for instance the 3.3 is 3.2 volts according to this, the, uh, the V1 positive 12 volt is 12.1. The power good signal came up within 235 milliseconds. So everything is looking good. Now I'm going to turn the power supply off here and I'm going to simulate an error by disconnecting the 8 pin auxiliary power connector and powering the power supply back up. And we can see the, how this one shows us its error. So right here, my positive 12 volt V2 is missing its zero volts as expected because we don't have it plugged in. So if one of these is too far out of specifications, the entire display will turn red and it will blink the voltage that is out of specs. So these are great little power supply testers just to see if an unloaded power supply, a uh, power supply that's not working hard is putting out good voltages. If, if it's showing bad with no load, it's definitely a bad power supply. Now, it might still be a bad power supply under load, but a power supply tester that puts a load on a power supply, you're talking about much more serious money. So having just this little $20, $25 power supply tester in your arsenal, in your toolkit, I think is a must for any PC technician. One other way we can check the voltage from the power supply is through the health monitoring of the motherboard. So this particular motherboard made by ASUS, I've gone into the setup program, commonly called going into the BIOS, and from the main screen if I go into advanced mode by pressing F7, I can then go over to the monitor menu, and if I scroll down, it will show me my voltages. It's showing me the current voltage going to my CPU, but what I'm interested in is the powers coming out of the power supply into the motherboard. So my 3.3 volts is 3.344, that's good. My 5 volts is slightly over 5, and my 12 volt is slightly over 12. So this appears to be a good power supply. No load is really on the power supply right now, 
it, it might be messing up under heavy load, but indications are everything is good. So I can hit F7, go back into the main screen, but almost every motherboard BIOS has the ability to look at voltages. That's another way you can double check. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and hit that bell so you'll know when I release another video. Thanks a lot.